Not many people can say they did this, but Sam Sorbo has defeated Hercules. She was cast as the leading lady in the hit TV series, and she made the title character so nervous during the filming, he couldn't remember his lines. Well, the two married in real life the following year, and now Sam is raising their children and helping other parents navigate the legendary journey through the school year. Take a look. Sam Sorbo is a talk radio host, actress, and model. But her greatest achievements are that of a wife and mom. Sam met her husband, Kevin, while playing his leading lady in the hit TV series, Hercules. Both have been successful in Hollywood, yet remain outspoken about their faith in God. In her book, Teach From Love, Sam offers 180 lessons to instill godly qualities in your children, one for every day of the school year. Sam Sorbo, Sorbo is here with us now, and we welcome you to the 700 Club. That's the most interesting <laughs> introduction I've ever had. I, we'll I appreciate that. Too, that. If you'd like it. <laughs> how did you get into homeschooling? Was that always something you intended to do, or how did it come about? So I, my second grader was was midway through second grade, and I wasn't getting reports back. And uh, the teacher, I finally asked the teacher one day, "Hey, how are his reports?" And she said, "Oh, not good." And I had been a very involved parent. I went into the classroom multiple times during the week and helped out the teacher. And on this particular day, I was helping her clean up the class. And, mm. and I thought, wh why am I not getting this information? So I started doing the book reports with him every day after school. And I realized I'm homeschooling. I'm just doing it at wow. the end of the day when we're yeah. tired and cranky and hungry. Yeah, it, it's you know it's a big responsibility, isn't it? Even mm. when you're, even mm. if your child is in school with someone else, when they come home, you have to help process all of what's happened during the day. See, in your time, we're time. under a misconception that we are handing off the responsibility to the schools. But parents have sued the school system for not teaching their children to read, and they've lost every suit because it is still the parent's responsibility. Mm -hmm. So it is the responsibility of the parent, regardless of how you handle that. We yeah. think that the school is going to do a good job, but all evidence to the contrary. We we know that our schools are failing, and yet we're, we're continuing to send our children into those schools. Yeah. And and frankly, as Christians, I I, I don't see it. Yeah. Oh, they're teaching our children that there are accidents of nature, and that survival of the fittest is the is the law of the land, and then hypocritically telling them don't bully. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it, there's, a, there's a disconnect a here. Weird message. And and. We started out by talking about academics. Some of what you're mentioning now has to do with character and just our thought process. And you start your book out with the story of a woman who uh, came to you after you had spoken somewhere and said, so are you saying that, that the schools aren't able to teach our children strong values? And how did you respond to it? Well, that? they're teaching our children survival of the fittest. Is that the biggest value that we want? Because then there's then there's no reason to go help the, the hurricane survivors exactly. right now. If survival of the fittest, then, oh, I'm sorry, that's up to, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a, it's a very callous message that our kids are getting in school. Yeah. Well, and teachers have almost been stripped of the right to bring them anything else. You know, Sadly, that's they're... true. Although in my book, it's, I have I have sort of secular stories that mm -hmm. are just stories from the real world, like Johnny finds a wallet and there's $20 in the wallet. What should he do? Yes. You know, he should yes. try to find the owner of the wallet. He shouldn't just <laughs> take the money and say, yay, yes. you know, bully for you, because I, you know. And so, so, so school teachers could take these lessons into the classroom because mm -hmm. it is appropriate, I think, for a, for a, a school teacher. And I love school teachers. I mean, God bless them. Oh They're working goodness. in a system really? that is very difficult for them to get their job done. Should be paid more than anybody done, else in right? the country. <laughs> but, the, but, but the thing is, they can bring these, these sort of moral messages into the classroom without necessarily having to bring up the Bible. Overt, I mean, right. we live in a Judeo-Christian society. Yeah. Bible, the Bible and the message from the Bible is everything everywhere. It's in, it's, it's in our legal system. Mm -hmm. What's a stop sign? A stop sign is a moral value Valerie, right. because mm -hmm. we value life. Why do we value life? Because of our Judeo-Christian culture. Mm -hmm. We've disconnected that so people don't realize that. But yeah. but that's the way it is. So so teachers could use this book too. But I wrote it primarily for families to, to have the discussion. You you work with a group of seventh graders in mm -hmm. homeschooling, and that kind of initiated some of what you've put in here, you mm -hmm. know, saying even the kids you were working with, 
just understanding what is morality, what is good right. character, what are, how did those seventh graders impact you to write this book, Teach From Love? Well, I, I brought in a moral characteristic. I'd put a godly characteristic up on the board, and we'd workshop it, and we'd talk about it, and, and then they would internalize it. They'd bring it up later in the day. And I thought, this is, this is a great opportunity that is kind of being missed. We... We just expect our kids to kind of just get the message osmosis, and us yeah. by osmosis, and, and that's not the way it works. It's important to have those discussions. That's why, that's partly why I did the movie that I did, yeah. is because we need to be talking about life and death. What is the meaning? What, why are we here? Why do we why die? Why do we believe what, what we believe? Why do we believe yeah. what we believe, or why don't we believe? Mm -hmm what we don't believe, right? <laughs> exactly, just and as so, important. Yeah. Yes. So, so it's all of a piece, really. It, you, you do a really wonderful job of taking two qualities on, in each of these lessons that you write, and they're lessons for Monday through Friday, for if that's the way you want to use them for, mm -hmm. for homeschool scenarios. Mm -hmm. Why two? How did you determine that? Well, we have two eyes for binocular vision, and I just thought there were two ways in binocular vision. We, we, we see things in three dimensions, and I think if you have two qualities that you can sort of juxtapose to, juxtapose to each other, uh -huh. then, then you get a better vision. School year has just started. Yes. It's a fresh opportunity. I yes. think it's also responsibility. I think parents feel the weightiness of that. And you start your book with two qualities that are significant going into the school year. One of them, fearlessness, and what was the other one, uh, boldness. Yes. Now those two things do play off of each other. Yes. Why is that important as our kids start the school year? Well, there's a lot that happens in school that, that's, that causes anxiety, mm -hmm. uh, which it saddens me because, of course, I'm a homeschooler, so I went through this with, with uh, my middle child. He started crying before kindergarten every day, and I finally realized he wanted to nap. He didn't want the stress of going into the classroom in the afternoon mm -hmm. because he was tired by then. Um, so, so I just I want to I want to bolster both children and parents and families. And if you can have this discussion with your kids, you will grow in your relationship with your children. And that's and that's what homeschooling really is all about. It's about the relationship. We have to ask ourselves: Our public schools are telling us that school is about college prep and career readiness. Is that your highest aspiration for your children? If it is. God bless you. Mm -hmm. But if, if your highest aspiration for your children is to know God and to make him known, mm -hmm. then, then maybe you need to revisit why you're sending your children into a system that that's not what their goal is. how to best make that happen. Um, teach from love, it's a wonder, it's not just for homeschoolers. I mean, every no. family could use this exactly. as a daily devotional, morning, yeah. noon, night, whenever you choose to use it. It's great dinner Wonderful table conversation. Discussion. Yes. But I want to mention also, you have a movie coming out in December? No, it's in October. October, okay. October 27th, Let There Be Light. I co-wrote it. I, could, I had the idea, and I found a co-writer, thankfully, who agreed to write the movie with me. <laughs> and then two weeks later, Sean Hannity called my husband and said, I want to do a faith-based movie with you. And wow. uh, uh, about Thank a year you, later, <laughs> I, I had a movie. I tell you, it's a, this is, it's a miracle that this movie exists, because the story behind this movie, w you couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. As a movie, people, it's not believable enough to make as a movie, yeah. right? Right. And, um, uh, but the story of the movie is absolutely believable, <laughs> the story that's in the movie. <laughs> and my husband plays, uh, plays the lead character, and he's fantastic, as, as we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we should watch for this. Let There Be Light. Let There Be Light. October 27th. Mm, go to letthereBeLightTheMovie.com. Okay. Go to the Facebook page. We need all this support in social media that we can get. Tell all your yeah. friends. You'll see the trailer on our Facebook page, and we're, uh, we're doing hashtag share the light just to get the message out there and trying to encourage people to share their faith and to, to get people into the faith. Mm -hmm. And by the way, I mean, this, this movie, you know, I encourage people to invite people to church. Yes. Because if you have a great church, why not share that, right? Exactly. But it's right. hard to invite people to church these days. There's like a, ooh, that's yeah. a weird. What do they want right? from me? And invite <laughs> them to the movie. Yeah. You don't have to join the movie. You can just go and Just bring them to the movie. It'll <laughs> move you, you. Okay. It'll change you. Wonderful. And again, the book is called Teach From Love. Teach Them Love. No, Teach, no, teach from, from Love. <laughs> teach From Love, a school year devotional for families, and it's available wherever books are sold. Highly recommended. For more information about the movie, Let There Be Light, go to our website, cbn.com. It's all there, and we'll send you and the friends you decide to invite off on a wonderful opportunity to see something that's a blessing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for having here. me. I appreciate mm -hmm. it.